Okay, week two, chapter one, cellular biology. This is a review chapter. I'm going to go through this lecture fairly quickly. What, what this should give you is an idea of the things that uh, you should pay attention to that are important and the kinds of things that you can let go. So this is not about memorizing everything that's in this chapter. We understand that cellular functions um, are different and uh, allow cells to do different things um, and they mature. Here's a simple list of the different kinds of cellular functions that take place within the body. Here is a picture of the cellular contents. Now, um, the important structures and why they're important is what you need to remember here, and not all of them that are listed. So in the nucleus, this is where we find our genetic materials for cell reproduction, the DNA and RNA synthesis. Important to know. Mitochondria, which is where the energy is produced. So anytime we're talking about aerobic met, uh, metabolism and ATT, ATP production, um, this is also where the energy takes place for apoptosis, which is programmed cell death, um, osmotic regulation, and pH regulation. The endoplasmic reticulum is where protein synthesis takes place, and also the regulation of lipids and calcium. Lysosomes are where uh, phagocytosis takes place. Uh, the Golgi complex stores all the energy packages to uh, allow the cells to transport things, and the cell membrane, which is where diffusion, osmosis, and cell recognition takes place. Basically, um, understanding in a very general way the cell communication process, which can take place through receptor proteins, and here's a nice picture of what that looks like. It can take place through neurotransmitters. Again, here's some pictures of how that takes place. Cellular metabolism, big, big picture kinds of ideas you need to understand. Anabolism is where um, the body is actually using energy, and catabolism is where we're actually releasing energy into the body. So basically, we're looking at definitions here and that you understand um, the fundamental definitions of how the body uh, and the cells conduct cellular metabolism. ATP is the fuel for cell survival. This is the energy that, um, that is created within the body to allow us to do things like muscle contraction, active transport, and it is the system for which the body stores and transfers energy. Really cool picture of glucose metabolism and how it takes place. Um, so I think the important piece that, that you will begin to have to transfer is it's not just about memorizing um, the words and the definitions, but you're going to have to begin to link these processes to processes in the body so that it makes sense to you. So this is an example of how glucose is metabolized. Anaerobic metabolism takes place in the body. Um, uh, this is a process where there is very limited energy produced and during an anaerobic uh, metabolic process, lactic acid is predominantly the waste product, which is part of the reason um, that the body uh, gets into so much trouble when we, we try to carry on our processes without um, oxygen and energy. Uh, the, the Krebs cycle is a, a, an example of aerobic energy metabolism where the waste products excreted um, are CO2 and that they make a whole bunch of energy um, in the process. 
two basic um, processes of, of uh, conducting cellular um, processes within the body. One is passive transport, one is active transport. Um, I think the important piece here is in the process of active transport, we actually need energy um, to um, make the process work, and it works against the natural gradients um, that are that are driven through uh, the movement of water um, and pressures throughout the body, which is an example of passive transport. Here's some good examples of the types of membrane transport that go on within the body. A nice picture of the sodium pump, which is, um, discusses the action potential of the cellular membrane. Lastly, in this chapter, uh, it goes into a lot of um, information about tissue formation. And really what we basically need to understand here is that um, there's a highly coordinated communication and memory process that takes place in, in terms of how tissues are uh, formulated and that these formulations are a result of specialized gene patterns and differentiated cells um, and that all the cells turn out to look the same in terms of cell stem cells that they start in in the same place as stem cells and then at the end they become differentiated cells that do different things the kinds of tissues that you want to understand is we have nerve tissue which is all about uh, how our neurons work they're highly specialized cells we have epithelial tissue which um, is skin or, or skin-like, and it covers most of our internal and external body surfaces. We have connective tissue, which um, creates the binding of tissues and organs together, and we have muscle tissue. So those are the four types of tissues that you need to remember. That's it for Chapter 1.